Okay, great. Let's go. Well, let's get we'll start going. with Big Bang. Okay. Uh, the steady state theory of the universe was quite popular for, well, you can almost go back to the Greeks, this idea that the universe has eternally existed, that it's infinite in expanse, it's, ex it's infinite in time. Uh, and this was really something that atheists, I think, probably uh, particularly favored because it's, it resolved two potential problems for them. It avoided any issue of a first cause. If the universe has eternally existed, then we don't have to worry about how did it get started. It's just always been here. If the universe is infinite in its expanse, then uh, uh, there is so many probability resources that even improbable things become probable in a universe that's infinitely large. Right. Carl and, Sagan held yeah, to this view. Precisely. Uh, Big Bang cosmology was first proposed in 1929, and it came for a very interesting reason. As astronomers looked in every different direction into the sky, it seemed that the universe was receding. And the question is, how could we possibly be with the universe receding in every direction? Uh, didn't make any sense because we didn't think the Earth was at the center of the universe. And then a guy came up with a really interesting idea. If I had brought a balloon this morning, a round balloon, I'd put small dots on the balloon, uh, and then I began to blow it up. If you would imagine yourself on any one of those dots, you would see that all the other dots are moving away from you with your place on the surface of the balloon. So the more I blow the, blow the balloon up, the more the dots all recede from each other. And this became, I think, the kernel idea in the Big Bang. Now, what's interesting about that is if you imagine the universe as an expanding balloon, then you have to think, well, someplace in the past, it must have been something very small. And in fact, the Big Bang hypothesized exactly that, that the universe came into existence at a time in the past with an, an unexplicable explosion that first brought energy and it later condensed into matter. Uh, and the universe's expansion has continued ever since then with other things happening along the way. Energy and matter were created in this initial explosion. The term Big Bang was actually a derisive term by people who were making fun of the theory the uh, steady state people were saying, what a stupid idea, a big bang beginning to the universe. But today we kind of think of it as, actually it's a pretty good description. They meant it to be uh, ridicule, but it, it wasn't. But here are the important points. It postulated a universe of finite duration and a universe of finite expanse. Uh, this became widely accepted in 1965 with the discovery of the background radiation, which had actually been predicted if there was a big bang, there ought to be an afterglow. And the discovery of that afterglow, which precisely fit what the models had predicted, was compelling evidence. Mm -hmm. What are the philosophical implications? I think Stephen Hawking, who is a well-known agnostic from Cambridge University in England in his book, A Brief History of Time, put it this way, so long as the universe had a beginning, we could suppose it had a creator. That's exactly why many of the steady state people didn't want to accept the Big Bang, even though the evidence for it was actually much better. Robert Jastrow in 1977, one of the uh, famous astronomers of uh, that period, uh, founder of the Goddard Space Center, a professor at Columbia University, keynote speaker at this particular conference, and he gave a talk that surprised people. When you're an invited speaker, you can usually talk on whatever you want. And he wanted to talk on God and the astronomers. Now, as an agnostic, agnostic, that was a rather peculiar topic. But he can, goes through and he shows that evidence for the Big Bang has always been superior to that for steady state, and the resistance to accepting it was philosophical implications. His concluding paragraph in his presentation, which is a wonderful book by the same title, God and the Astronomers, you should get it and read it. It's a 50-minute read because it was a 50-minute talk. Here's what he says. For the scientist who has lived by his faith in the power of reason, the story of the Big Bang ends like a bad dream. He has scaled the mountains of ignorance. He's about to conquer the highest peak. As he pulls himself over the final rock, He's greeted by a band of theologians who have been sitting there for centuries. Isn't that a great quote? I would love to have been there to have seen the sort of astonished and maybe irritated uh, look of, uh, of these people because this is the most prestigious scientific meeting in the world each year, the annual meeting of the AAAS, and uh, for him to have led it. Uh, and then he went on in his book to say, and, and in the presentation, you know there's something odd about this whole idea too because if you look in Genesis 1-3, this old archaic Hebrew writing. Uh, the first act of creation was for God to say, let there be light. light. Now that sounds innocent enough, 
But in fact, the Big Bang makes exactly that claim that the universe began in a fiery explosion of electromagnetic radiation uh, that later condensed into matter. And who would have ever thought that you would say, let's begin with light, okay? It doesn't make any sense from our kind of common, ordinary experience. So, and he said, that's a kind of an interesting coincidence, but uh, very. In a subsequent interview with Christianity Today, agnostic uh, Dr. Jastrow says, astronomers now find they've painted themselves into a corner because they have proven by their own methods that the world began abruptly in an act of creation to which you can trace every star, every planet, and everything in this cosmos and on the earth. And they have found that this happened as a product of forces they cannot hope to discover. Isn't that a remarkable concession or admission by a very famous scientist who is an agnostic? I might add, Jastrow uh, wanted to debate Carl Sagan because he really didn't like Carl Sagan's program, Cosmos, and he felt like it was a bit of a charlatan sham uh, scientifically, and Sagan would never debate him. I mean, uh, we would have been happy to have helped organize that. Uh, <laughs> funny. Okay, so let's summarize the evidence from the Big Bang Theory as follows. The scientific evidence overwhelmingly supports Big Bang cosmology, and Big Bang cosmology clearly supports deism or theism as opposed to atheism. Because there's a beginning, and if there's a beginning, that means there must have been a creator. It Absolutely. couldn't have created itself. It's, it's not an uncaused cause. It's actually a cause. Yep. So there has to be that.